Hello and welcome to the Freedom Baptist Church podcast from Freedom Baptist Church in Mineola, Texas, where we're free from the chains of sin and death. Thank you for listening and please enjoy. He fell, he got sentenced to 45 years, and they reduced the sentence to four years. There was a gentleman that wrote a book by the name of Jim Brewer, and uh, he, uh, Jim Baker called him to come see him, and he said, uh, did you write this book? And he said, yes, sir, I did. And they got to talking, and he said, uh, he said, when, Jim Brewer asked him, he said, when did you fall out of love with Jesus? He said, I never, never fell out of love with Jesus. He said, what? And he started li- listening, to, listening, to, listening to all the sins that, that he had committed, bank fraud, adultery, the whole, the whole nine yards. He said, how can you sit there and say that you didn't love Jesus? He said, I never stopped loving Jesus, but I stopped fearing him. I stopped fearing him. Are you going to follow me on this one? How many of you have had earthly fathers? Everybody? I don't know about y'all, but my earthly father instilled a great sense of awe and wonder and fear in me. Let's go to Hebrews, the 12th chapter. And we're going to try to understand a few things here. Hebrews, the 12th chapter. And I got to speak tears in my eyes. I don't know if I can read my notes. Hebrews, the 12th chapter. That ain't it. Hebrews, the 12th chapter. That ain't it. I can't read. Hebrews 12, 6. All right. Because I'll get my glasses on. Let's start back in verse 12. And let's think just a minute on the reverence that we gave our fathers. Wherefore, seeing, Hebrews 12, 1, we're seeing we were also com- so compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every way to the sin which does so easily beset us. Let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, for who the, jo- who the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such affliction, and there is such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be worried and faint in your mind. Ye have not resisted unto blood, striving against sin. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as children. My son, despise, thou, despise not thou the chastening of the father, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For the Lord loveth whom the Lord loveth, he chased me and scourged every son whom he received. 
If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as sons. For what son is he whom the Father chasteneth not? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, I thank you for the day, and I want to thank you for this, that magnificent solo. Dear God, I pray that this simple little message touch hearts and minds and souls. If there be one here, Father, that's lost, I pray that you touch them. Tell them that your son died, was buried, and rose again, that they might be the sons of adoption. They might be the sons of promise. Father, I pray that you use me one more time. In Jesus' mighty name I ask it. Amen. Just like his daddy. My, uh, I've got three boys. Me and Laura got three boys together. Just like their daddy was not necessarily a good thing because I wasn't always a good guy. But how many times did Laura shook her head and said he's just like his daddy? Always one more. Always one more time. Yeah. Okay. Now, we, we got, uh, just like his dad. I'm just like my daddy. I'm just like James Robert Smith. But when we're born again, that which is born of spirit is spirit, born of blood is blood. We're all born into the family of God. So God is going to use us. God is going to take that rod and going to make us into a likeness of himself. When I was a child, when I was young, I thought my daddy could do anything, Miss Peggy. I thought my daddy was the smartest man in the world. But as I got older, I got wiser. And by the time I was about 15 or 20, I, didn't, I was surprised that my mom and daddy could get up and down the road. I didn't think they knew anything. Oh, Daddy, you, you're just not hit. You're just not with it. You just don't know what's going on. You just, you just don't know the lifestyle that, that's going out there right now. How is that like our world today? How is that not unlike our world today? We, we, when, we were, when we were young, we didn't think our mom and daddy knew anything. But I'm here to tell you, the older I get, the wiser my mom and daddy was. Now I believe they're the smartest people I've ever met. And growing in the Lord is the same way. When we're first born, we're just, we're just so enamored with our father and our mother. And as we grow, eh, not so much. We see what the world's got to offer. And we, we don't want to listen to the instruction of our father. And sometimes my daddy had to apply the board of knowledge to the seat of the education. Matter of fact, it was quite often. What are you getting, Brother Don? When we get too big for our own britches, God will take us down a little bit. But it's not because he hates us. Many of us are wondering, why am I going through these things? Why am I going through these battles? Why is it so hard, Brother Vernon? Why can't life just be simple? Why can't God just let me do what I want to do? Because he loves you. He loves you enough that he doesn't want to see you going through these things, going through these battles. He, doesn't, he knows what's in front of you. He knows where it all is. He knows what you're fixing to do. And he's going to put hedges. He's going to put things in your way to deter you out of the, out of the way. Now, I'm going to tell you, I did a lot of things back in my youth. But I love playing guitar. And I was fairly decent at it. But one day, out in California, I, uh, did a bunch of things I wasn't supposed to do. 
shot myself into a stroke. I have no feeling in my left hand or foot. I kept wondering, well, God, why would you take my guitar playing away from me? Why would you take the thing that I love away from me? The thing that gave me joy away from me. But you like Jim Baker's old love. I lost the fear of God. And doing that was the greatest blessing that God ever gave me. Although I loved it. God took it away because God knew where it was going to take me. God knew where I was going to wind up. So God had to chasten me like a loving father. You see, my mom and dad, or my mom and daddy, we're old school. And I couldn't get away with nothing. N-O-T-H-I-N. Nothing. My daddy was best friends and fishing buddies with the sheriff of Upshur County, Wood County, Smith County, Harris County, all of them. I couldn't do nothing that my daddy didn't find out about. Normally before I got home. Doyle Johnson used to be the sheriff of, of uh, Upshur County before I would get home. Daddy already knew what they caught me doing, and Daddy was standing out in the front yard. And I hated it. I hated the fact that I couldn't get away and couldn't do anything. I couldn't be myself. I couldn't live my own life. But that's the greatest blessing that I ever had. You see, when we do these things, when we live these lives, God is chasing us for our own good, for our betterment. Now let's go to Philippians chapter 1, and I'm going to show you something. What's all this for? Why didn't God let me live my life? Why didn't God allow me to do the things I wanted to do? I've, I've done this and such. I've prepared to do this and such with my life. I, I played the guitar. I, I, I loved it. I used to live for it. Here we're going to get the crux of the whole deal. Philippians 1, chapter, or verse 6. Being confident of this very thing, that he who hath begun a good work in you will, W-I-L-L, -L, with Don kicking and screaming, with Don doing whatever, he will perform it. When God puts a calling on your life, when God gives you something to do, he will perform it. He will take away everything like my daddy used to do. My daddy used to ground me. He'd take my car. Daddy, why are you grounding my car? Why are you taking my car? Because he knew what I was going to do. He who has begun a good work in you will Perform it. He's going to perform it. With you kicking and screaming. With you hating on God. Being this confident of this very thing that he, which has begun to work, will. W-I-L-L. -L, until the day of Jesus Christ. Now when's it going to end? When's it going to end? When you look like your daddy. Like I told you. I didn't think my mom and daddy could get up and down the road. Now they're the smartest people that they that I ever met in my life. I used, used to, man. But here's the thing, the test. God puts us through test that He might make us into His image, His likeness. Do we like it? No. But He who has called you. Has set you apart. He's got a calling on your life. He's got a calling. He's got something for you to do. He may let you have fun for a little while, but he's going to hem you in. He may hem you in through finances. He may hem you in through health problems. He may hem, hem you in through anything it takes. But anything it takes, he is going to use it to accomplish his purpose. Do we have to like it? Uh-uh. Uh-uh. 
there, we, you know, we, we think there's easier ways of getting this done. No, there's not. No, there's not. Because God instilled us with pride. And I don't know anybody that's prideful around here. Do you, Miss Peggy? Mm -hmm. Don wants to do things Don's way. And it doesn't end out real well. But God is preparing for a purpose. God is preparing you and giving you all the direction in your life to bring you to one thing, and that is joy for him. That above all things, he might have the preeminence, not Don Smith, because if Don Smith had got to be the guitar player that he wanted to be, he, I guarantee you, God wouldn't have been nowhere in the picture. God knew he had to take that away from me. God knew he had to take that gift. He's taken many gifts away from me. All to bring me here. Here. I don't know what he's doing yet. But I do know this much. That all things, A-L-L, -L, all things, all things that's going on in your life, Everything that's going on in your life, every hardship, every trial, every besetting sin that's in your life is designed to do one thing. That he which begun a good work in you will perform it. W-I-L-L. -L, with you kicking and screaming. Now, it's a whole lot easier if you'll go along with it. But old prideful Don doesn't do that, Miss Peggy. Prideful Don wants to kick. Prideful Don wants to have it his way. Don thinks Don can do it better than God. Don thinks God knows better than God sometimes. And what does God do? God takes Don to the woodshed. Sometimes he has to take away the things that you love most. It doesn't have to be that way. But rest assured, that he will perform it. Now, I'm going to give you an illustration, a biblical illustration, that ain't got nothing to do with Don. Y'all remember hearing a story about a backslid Baptist preacher by the name of Jonah? Jonah got the call from God. We learned about it. We learned about it in, in children's church, Miss Peggy, about how that backslid Baptist preacher God told him to go one way, and he hopped in a boat and went the other. God wasn't having it. God put him in a storm. God's going to put you in a storm. If God's got a calling on your life, if God has put on you a direction, if he has given you a vision in your life, if you run from it, you're going to wind up in a storm and you wind up in the foot of the belly. And what did Jonah wind up doing, Miss Peggy? He wound up being cast out. After he spent three days and three nights in the belly of a whale. And I'd be willing to bet that he don't like sushi to this day. I'd be willing to bet that he don't like nothing fishy this day. But God gets his purpose across. And he who which began a good thing in Jonah did perform it. You want to know how it wound up? I'm going to tell you how it wound up. He went and preached. He went and told him, told the king. And they, they the, the Ninevites, they hated the Jews. The Jews hated the Ninevites. And God sent him to his enemies and told them to. Prophesying to him. Tell him 40 days ago, it's going to come to an end. Everybody there believed him. Believe that backslidden Baptist preacher. And God stayed in destruction for 40 years. Okay, now here's where it gets tough. Here's where Don comes out, Miss Peggy. What did, what did Jonah do? Everybody had repented in sackcloth and ashes. Jonah got mad because God didn't kill him. Don went and sat down under a tree and got mad 
Because it didn't happen the way Don wanted it to happen. There's many times in our lives that God will use us and we don't understand why. Just like Jonah, it'll make us matter in a whole hand. But God's purpose will be accomplished. Make no doubt about it. Even though that backslid Baptist preacher Jonah changed the course of history in Nineveh, he wasn't happy about it. You don't have to be happy about it to do God's will for your life. You don't have to like it, but make sure, make sure, take heed, listen to me. Just like Jonah, God's will will be accomplished with you kicking and screaming or with you going along. If God's got a calling on your life, and I'm going to stop right here. In your calling, in your salvation, I'm going to tell you something right now. If you are what you was, then you ain't. If you can live in sin, high, wide, and handsome, and God not chasten you, God not take you to the woodshed, those beloved boys of yours, when they do wrong, what do you do? Hmm? God's going to do the same thing. If you can live in sin, if you can live what, what you tell your boys not to do, and they do it, you're going to spat that bottle. If you can live in sin, high, wide, and handsome, and there is no repercussions for God, I wouldn't give a half a hallelujah for your salvation. Because just like we read, he who has, uh, he who has begun a good work in you, almost spoke it done, a good work in you will, will perform it. With you kicking and screaming, hollering, what do you want to do? God's work will be accomplished. Okay? What's the takeaway from this, Brother Don? God's got a will for this church. God's got a will for your life. God's got something for you to do. If God didn't have something for you to do, the day that you were saved, he would have taken you home. If God was done with you, he would have taken you home. God ain't done. He ain't even begun. So, the question is going to be, what are you going to do? How many of you like fish sticks? How many of you like being involved in that whale? You see, God's will is going to be accomplished. It may be with you kicking and screaming, running and hollering, shouting. It can be shouting and jumping. But God's will is going to be. And it's going to be for the salvation of souls. We were saved to be a witness. We were saved to be like daddy. Who's your daddy? You look just like your daddy. Do you look like your daddy the world? Or do you look like your daddy, daddy Jesus? You see, who you are and what you do, it will come out. You're going to look like your daddy. You're going to look like the people you hang around, the people that you walk to with, talk to, listen to, sing with, play guitar with, preach with. God will be, be accomplished in your life if he's got to put you in the belly of the way. God doesn't want to necessarily do that. But his will will be accomplished. So, as we wind up today, I'm going to ask you a question. Who's your daddy? Who's your daddy? If your daddy's the devil, you can coast on. You won't have no problems. Because I promise you, he ain't going to bother you if you, if you ain't got nothing going on. But if God's your daddy, he's going to spank you when you get out of line. But daddy, I don't want to. I don't want to get up at 4 o'clock in the morning and go feed the cow. But I did it. Kicking and screaming. How are you going to go? Kicking and screaming or are you going to go looking like your daddy? 
Fifth, God's got one hard-headed son, and I know who he is. My wife, Miss Peggy, and all these, they'll tell you that God books me on a daily basis because Don likes to do what Don does, wants to do. But God will back you in a corner to accomplish his will. How many of you today are running from God? How many of you has God told to do something? And we're doing everything we can. Do you look like your daddy? Do you act like your daddy? Do you talk like your daddy? That's the question. The question today is, who's your daddy? I didn't ask you how many times you got baptized. Don't care. If you went in the water without a, without a working knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, if you went in out, out of the water without him having reborn you, you're as lost as a goose and headed straight to hell. I don't care how many times you did it. But if you're born again of the Son of God, that which is born of flesh, flesh, that which is born of spirit is spirit, God is going to do to you what he has to do to get his will done, whether it's done kicking and screaming or not. Now, we've got a lot out today. We got a lot of a lot of babies, a lot of babies sick with the crew. But God put here who He wanted here to hear this message, mostly from me. Because see, what y'all don't understand is Don preaches to Don ninety percent of the time. Miss Peggy, Brother Steve, he'll come. We're gonna have a couple of words, or a couple of songs of invitation. And then we'll have our eat meat. Because we're Baptists, we like to eat. But I want to ask you, what are you holding back from God? What's God told you to do? What's God told you to do?